So yesterday was the keynote for WWDC. Uh, we had iPad OS 16 announced along with a whole bunch of other really great stuff, but uh, I'm just gonna focus on talking about iPad OS 16 because I think it's a really, really big deal for a lot of people, um, especially um, iPad users. So yeah, let's, uh, let's grab a seat and talk about it. Okay, so like I was saying, it's the day after the keynote. I wanted to take some time and kind of gather my thoughts. I didn't want to make a video just rehashing all the stuff you saw in the keynote or might have read online. I wanted to really wanted to take my time because I iPad OS 16 might be one of the most interesting iPad releases uh, just in terms of what it means for the future of the iPad and for iPad users. If you saw my other video, you know I'm here in Cupertino. I actually got to attend the event in person. And I'm, I, it, was, it was an amazing event, but uh, I, I, there's plenty of stuff out about that. Let us focus just on iPad OS 16. So I'm gonna pull up my notes here. So there's a few really key things that they announced. Now there's a bunch of little things spread throughout the OS. So this video it does not cover everything in iPad OS 16. Um, like I always do, I will do a complete walkthrough in September when it's officially released. Uh, so you can like see all the features and stuff like that. But one of the really big key points uh, that was a part of iPad OS 16 is a focus on apps. Uh, apps are being kind of rethought to not just be big iPhone versions. They are being um, thought of as desktop class apps now. And that was a phrase that kept coming up in the keynote. And honestly, it was the thing I was the most excited about. Like, there's a lot of other really great stuff in there. But the fact that they kept talking about desktop class apps on the iPad uh, meant a lot to me as an iPad user because that basically signals, hey, the iPad is a true uh, computer. It's a standalone, like this is a place where we consider people to get work done. So uh, w one app that was added to the iPad that is making a lot of people happy, and I've never understood why people felt like it needed to be there, was the weather app. Okay, cool. Um, I'm glad it's there. Honestly, I get a lot of comments about there's no weather app on the iPad. Okay, uh, I, I mean, there's no weather app on the Mac. I don't really think there needs to be one, but that's besides the point. But the apps that got some big improvements that they talked about in the keynote was Mail and Files. Uh, Mail got a whole bunch of modern features like being able to send stuff later, uh, just a, some really nice stuff. Files got some really nice improvements like customizable toolbar, being able to pick up like the uh, folder file size, like there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Like the, the two apps that I felt that were like pro apps from Apple that really needed some some TLC got that TLC. So I'm, I'm really, really happy about that. And like I said, apps are, apps are being rethought. Like they are really putting an emphasis on desktop class apps. There's a whole section in the keynote about like, them going through the OS and like deciding like, hey, these are all the features that aren't in iPad OS right now or aren't available for iPad OS apps that really in order to be a desktop class app they need. So uh, they added a whole bunch of features in like that customizable toolbar, uh, system wide undo and redo, things like that. Um, I, there's, there was a whole bunch there that I needed to dig into. Another really interesting feature that was added is collaboration. So collaboration is essentially built throughout the system. Any document or file or something you're working on, there should be a new option in the share sheet as third parties implement it. And, and the first party apps, it's gonna already be there. But basically you're going to be able to not send a copy of the document, but actually send the document to other people and they can all work on it at the same time together. It's really, really impressive. I mean, I kind of think of it's like Google Docs. It's almost like Apple catching up to Google Docs, but it's not just limited to documents. It's it's basically whatever you know people want to implement. Like the Procreate people could implement this if you want to have multiple people working on a canvas together. That's pretty cool. And then later on in the year, there's going to be an app called Freeform coming. And Freeform is a collaborated collaboration whiteboard so you can be having a FaceTime call with a group of people 
uh, set up a collaboration in Freeform and you guys can like sketch out ideas and stuff like that. I was talking to my pal Noah Herman and he was saying like, he, he talks to another YouTuber quite a bit about like just kind of like working on thumbnail ideas and that this would be like perfect for that because like they work on it together and like you'd be able to kind of like sketch out ideas while on a video call. So like you're not trying to like describe something that's visual uh, using audio, you can literally draw it out. Now, again, like I've said on this channel before, I can't draw to save my life. So we'll see if it actually works for me or not. <laughs> but then we start to get into kind of a weird section of the keynote. So all the next features are specific for a certain iPad. So um, I'm just gonna pull off one really quick, reference mode. Reference mode is a really interesting feature that is just for the 12.9 inch uh, new iPad Pro. So the one with the mini LED display, that really nice display, this guy right here. I knew there was a reason why I brought this and not the iPad Air to WWDC. I really like this. So it's meant for people that need color accurate work. So things like, um, uh, like photo editing, color grading, even drawing, like if you are doing some logos or something like that, like companies have a specific hex code for a lot of their colors and stuff like that. Like Coca-Cola has a specific red for their Coca-Cola logo. So that's, that's like perfect for this kind of thing. So that's a really cool feature to be added. Um, they talked about how you can turn that on and use it with sidecar or uh, um, universal control and stuff like that if you're working from the Mac. But honestly, I will turn it on when I'm doing photo edits on my iPad. So that is a big reason for me to go back to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro permanently over the iPad Air because I do do a lot of that color grading work and I do want to make sure like my, my color grades and stuff are accurate. Then all the next features are just for M1 iPads. So this could be the M1 11 inch iPad Pro that came out in 2021 the 12.9 inch one that came out in 2021, or the most recent iPad Air that got the M1 chip. These are just for, all the next features are just for the M1 chips. And it's interesting that they decided to only go for the M1 chips. And I think a lot of these features, as you start to pull them apart, it's just because they're memory intensive. And the 2018 iPad Pro, all but the one terabyte models have four gigs of RAM, the one terabyte model had six, and then the uh, 2021 one had six gigs of RAM. The M1 iPad Pros and iPad Air start at eight gigs of RAM. And then if you get the one or two terabyte iPad Pro, you get 16 gigs of RAM. So I think all of these features, they're limited, not because Apple's like, oh, we want you to buy new iPads. They're limited because they are memory intensive. At least that's what I'm kind of figuring out right now. That's that's the, the working theory. I still need to get full on confirmation for that, but, um, so let, let's just kind of get into it a little bit. So the first thing is virtual memory swap, speaking of memory. Uh, so what this means is, so my iPad Pro here, it's the two terabyte 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. So that means it has 16 gigs of RAM. If I run out of 16 gigs of RAM, it starts kicking things out in the background. Well, with virtual memory swap, it can use that extra free storage that I have and turn that into temporary RAM. So if it has something and it exceeds 16 gigs, it can use up that free space. That is a really cool feature that's been on like traditional computers for decades now. Um, and so it's just really cool that the iPad is, is getting that feature. I'm very, very excited about that. But apps can now also use up to 16 gigs of RAM, of, of the built-in RAM. So uh, what I'm really curious about is what does this mean for apps like Pro Apps, like LumaFusion and Procreate and stuff like that. Um, I've talked in the past, I've had some issues with LumaFusion, but I'm wondering if these new RAM and memory um, uh, rules and, and features and stuff like that, if they will fix a lot of the bugs that I had. So once they get a build out for iPad OS 16, I'm gonna give it a shot. That's, that's a definite for sure there because I would love to go back to having my entire workflow back on the iPad. Then there is display scaling. And this is one of the coolest features I am so excited about. So display scaling is just like on um, the Mac, essentially. So if you go into system settings or system preferences and go into display, you can pick different resolutions. So now on the iPad, there is the, uh, tr there's the two options that they've had, like the standard and then the, the zoomed in option. Well, now they have a more space option. And that more space option basically 
it kind of shrinks everything down a little bit, but it makes everything a little more compact and it just displays information, more information. And I absolutely love this because I always thought the stuff on the iPad, especially after using the MacBook Pro for a while, the stuff on the iPad was a little bit too blown up. So I'm really excited that that is kind of there now. It works really well. I'm not quite sure why that would be an M1 only feature. Um, I, I need to find out about that one, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure on that one, why that is just M1. But then we get to the big stuff, the pièce de résistance, if you will, Stage Manager. Stage Manager is essentially a new feature, and I wanna say right on top, the old multitasking feature is still there. Like you can still put two apps side by side in split view, that's totally still there. But for the M1 iPads, you can go into Control Center and enable a stage manager option now. And this gives you windowed apps. So you're able to basically have app, apps overlay on each other. You can resize the windows, do all sorts of really cool stuff. And then on the left hand side, there's groups. So what you can do is you can now put four apps in a group. So this is why I feel like this is why it's limited to the M1 iPads is because now you have four apps open at a given time. That starts to feel like a RAM limitation to me. But with Stage Manager, you can do all sorts of really cool things. You can have different groups of apps. You can jump between them. So like right now I have a note taking group. Then I have like a communication group that has Twitter, messages, and Discord open. Those are like the main apps I've been using this week while I'm here at WWDC and stuff like that to just like meet up and talk to people and stuff like that. So it's, it, I, I am really excited for Stage Manager, but diving into it, I need, to, I need to do more with it. But Stage Manager also enables external monitor support. And I'm very excited about that because it's, it's, it's been a long time coming that the iPad has needed external, true external monitor support. You can always plug it into a monitor and it would mirror. Um, it, it'll work with just about any monitor. You can plug your M1 iPad in and you can have four apps open on the iPad. And then on the uh, monitor, you can have another four apps open. So this means you can now have eight apps open total if you have it. Uh, an iPad plugged into an external monitor. That is a lot of multitasking right there. Like, I don't even think I, I typically have that many apps open on my uh, on my Mac when I'm using my Mac. Um, so that's really exciting to me. So like, my thought is like, oh, I'll have this plugged into my monitor. On the monitor, I'll have my notes app, maybe any like creative projects I'm working on stuff. And then on off to the side on the iPad, I can have my task manager, my calendar, that stuff. So that's, that's what's really exciting to me. Um, and I'm just, I'm really excited to kind of like dive into it. This video is sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is one of my favorite iPad accessories. It's on my iPad Pro, it's on the iPad Air I've been using, uh, it's on all the iPads. What it is, is it's a matte screen protector, but it has this texture. So when you're using the Apple Pencil and you're writing on the iPad like this, it feels like you're using a pencil and a piece of paper, a pen and a piece of paper. You have that textured feedback that I personally really like. Now, even if you don't use the Apple Pencil, you can still get benefits from the uh, paper light. So it's a matte screen protector. So if you have a big light like what I do right here, or you got sunlight coming in, on a glossy screen, it can be hard because it's reflective. It can be really hard to see the screen because of that reflection. A matte screen protector cuts down on that reflection. I really like the paper like it's got multiple applications for the way I use my iPad. I will put a link to it in the description below where you can check it out. My thanks to paper like for sponsoring this video. After iPad OS 15, a lot of people had questions why Apple would put the M1 chip into an iPad and not give it, you know, the power to actually take advantage of it. And that's what they're doing with iPad OS 16. They're showing why the, the M1 chip belongs in the iPad and they're just not just using the A15, like the, the iPhone chip. They, they, they're giving you a reason to use that kind of power. Like I said, honestly, I don't think it has anything to do being malicious or anything like that. I've seen a few comments online already about, oh, Apple just wants people to buy the new iPad and stuff like that. I really think it's just a RAM limitation. One of the things that I'm the most excited about is Apple is clearly focusing on pro workflows. Like that, if there is a theme for iPadOS 16, I would say it is that. 
like iPad OS 15's theme was clearly laying the groundwork for something. So this is definitely about the pro workflows. And as the keynote was happening, my brain was sitting there connecting the dot. We had the M2 chip announcement, which obviously the iPad has the M1 chip. So if we're following that trajectory, the M2 chip would be the next chip in the iPad Pro. Then you had the reference mode. Then you had external monitor support and stage manager and the all that extra RAM support. I To me, that screams pro apps like Final Cut and Logic are coming. But even that aside, it screams, hey, if you're a third party developer, you can make pro apps for the iPad and you're not going to be bogged down by resource issues like RAM limitations and stuff like that. Or, or even just screen size because of external monitor support. You can really just, you can make those windows as big as you want, as big as your monitor. To me, this OS release is truly embracing the modularity of the iPad. It's a feature or something I've talked about in the past about how it can be a tablet or a laptop with the magic keyboard or a notebook with the Apple Pencil. And now it takes it a step further by giving it true external monitor support. So now it can also be a desktop class computer that can handle true pro workflows. So that is something I'm very excited about. I'm very excited about the future of the iPad. Um, I, I do think these changes are going to take a minute for a lot of people to get their, their head around. Um, so obviously I will be doing my iPad OS 15 walkthrough video when it's officially out. So, and then when I can, I will be covering a lot more and showing off what I can, when I can and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm very excited about just the future of the iPad right now. If you're an iPad user and if you're watching this channel, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume you are. Uh, it, it's looking very bright right now. I'm very excited. I've been talking to a few other like iPad YouTubers and bloggers and stuff like that here. And we are all very, very, very excited about the future. So that's kind of it for the big overview of iPad OS 16. Like I said, there's a lot of little stuff in there that I will get into later, uh, but I just kind of wanted to talk about the thought, my thoughts on iPad OS 16, what it means for the future of the iPad. Uh, and I'm, I'm genuinely excited. Uh, so thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.